How's it going everybody? So every single woodworker that has ever been on YouTube has the exact same comment every single time they upload a woodworking video. I could do that exact same project if I had $100,000 in tools. This comment drives me crazy. When I first got started in woodworking, I was very young and I didn't have a lot of money. This was the toolbox I started with. Half of those just fell on the floor. I started out with very little. This isn't exactly the same toolkit, but this is a perfect representation of what I started with. This was my chisel. It's a sharpened screwdriver. This was my carving knife. This was a hammer. I did have a smaller hammer actually, but this actually worked better. It was heavier. This was my handsaw. I remember spending about 20 minutes one day sawing through a piece of plywood with this clamped in a pair of vice grips. These were my drill bits. I used to drill holes with these, once again, clamped in a pair of vice grips. If I needed a hole wider than that, I would use a screwdriver. You twist inside the hole until the hole is bigger. If you need a wider hole, you go flat tip. If I needed the hole any wider still, I could always widen the hole by actually sawing the hole wider inside some vice grips. When I was young, my dad did buy me a toolkit full of all kinds of sockets and wrenches and a few other tools uh, in kind of more of a complete set, but I was about eight, so my brother and I turned those into nunchucks. Not my proudest moment. And of course, on the other end of the spectrum, I've seen a lot of other woodworkers here on YouTube try to make the other argument that the way you get started is by spending about $1,000 worth of tools. And I completely disagree with that as well. To be honest, some of the woodworkers here on YouTube, I don't think remember what it's like to start from zero. My goal here is to show you what kind of tools you can buy to have the least barrier to entry and to start making about 90% of the projects that you want to make. After doing this for more than a decade now, I've learned that you don't really need all of those expensive power tools to do woodworking. Obviously, the power tools are gonna to make the job a lot easier and quicker, but it doesn't make it better. So what I decided to do today was to put together a toolkit that gives you the least barrier to entry. So the first tool I would suggest going out and getting is a handsaw and a triangular file. The handsaw is obvious why you would need it for woodworking, but if you wanna save money long-term, you're gonna to need to learn how to sharpen your saw. And if you're gonna buy one of these cheap handsaws, it, it, you don't have to go out and buy an expensive file. You could just get one of these cheap ones. I have kept this saw going for about a decade now and it still works just fine. Wow, I really need to straighten this saw. The main thing to look for when you're buying a new saw is to make sure that it's something that you can actually sharpen. So you're going to have to look at the teeth. If the teeth on the saw are discolored in any way, then that means it's something that's probably not able to be sharpened in the shop. At least not with something like a cheap file. I usually look for these western style saws because usually they are sharpened in a way that does not have that discoloration, which means it's something that can be sharpenable. I'm not going to go into detail on how to sharpen these properly because there is a major rabbit hole here on YouTube just going into file sharpening. Go look up one of those videos because they're going to do a much better job explaining how to sharpen the teeth than I am. The next few tools that I think everyone needs is a small set of chisels and some sort of a stone to sharpen them with. This is sort of the same idea as the wood saw. If you don't want to have to keep buying these chisels then you're going to have to find some sort of way of sharpening them. Once again, there are plenty of videos here on YouTube that will teach you how to sharpen things like this, so I'm not gonna go over that here. I'm pretty sure Samurai Carpenter actually has some of the best videos on this, so go watch him. The next tool every woodworker is going to need is some sort of a hammer. Generally, there are three different types of hammer handles that you're going to find, and in my opinion, the fiberglass ones are the best all around in terms of resilience and the shock absorption. Wood handles will generally be a lot easier on your hands and your joints, but they do have a tendency to break a little quicker, while the steel ones will generally never break, but they will be really hard on your joints and your hands. The fiberglass ones are a perfect middle ground, and as long as you're not misusing these, they won't break. You're also gonna need some sort of a screwdriver set, and these bit sets are actually incredibly cheap, and they work really well if you're just getting started. I feel like this one's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm gonna move on. Okay, now these things are just amazing. These are just sanding belts for a belt sander, and the reason I'm adding the belt and not the sander is because these can be fit over the top of a piece of wood very easily and turn them into custom files. Watch this. For years, I've been taking something like a simple two by four, and if you cut them to the right length, 
You can stretch these sanding belts over the board, which gives you a nice flat wide surface to sand with. The coolest thing about these is you can actually cut them into whatever shape you want. The belts will tear along the grain really easily, leaving you with whatever depth of sand belt you want. There's basically no limit to this concept, which is why I like them so much. This basically removes you from needing to buy files. Keep in mind that these are consumables and they aren't going to last you as long as some of these other tools will, but you would be surprised as to how long they actually do last. I usually switch these out about twice a year or so, so a stack like this will last you a long time. The next tool I wanted to show you was a speed square. You can either get a speed square or something like a carpenter square. Personally, I prefer the carpenter square, but you can get many more angles on a speed square than you can for the carpenter square. If you want a very quick and accurate way of getting straight cuts, that you really can't do much better than something like a speed square. The last two I wanted to show you was a drill and drill bit set. The problem with the electric drills is they don't seem to last very long if you buy the cheap ones. In my experience, the battery or the motor will always burn out within a year, so unless you can afford to buy a nice one, I would actually suggest going with something much cheaper that doesn't generally break. These actually work surprisingly well, and you don't actually need a lot of power to drill through the wood. And generally speaking, that whenever you're working with drill bits and wood, you're not going to have to learn how to resharpen these as often because you're just drilling through wood. A set like this will usually last you one or two years before you have to rebuy them, and they're only about $5, so I would consider these to be consumables. So lastly, if you're interested in starting woodworking, you have to remember this one very important fact. Do not try to do too much too quickly. Almost every time I have someone come into the workshop and they want to learn woodworking, the same thing happens. Nine times out of ten, the person will get somewhere between 50% and 75% of the way done with the project, and they realize it's not turning out exactly the way they want it. This will usually become very discouraging, and they won't want to finish the project. They usually just put it away, and they plan on coming back eventually, but they never actually do. It just sits in the corner, and it becomes a feeling of stress. It becomes this moment of stress in your life that you never actually want to come back to it. This will happen if you are overzealous with the project you choose. Everyone wants their first project to become a beautiful piece of art, but that's just not realistic. The best thing that you can do if you want to avoid this is just to go onto Pinterest and look up something like palette projects. There's like a million of these on there and if you're looking for ideas for projects, this is the best place to start. The reason I'm saying that you should start with something like a palette project is because they're generally very rustic. If you're gonna be making mistakes in your projects and if your project is already rustic, then that's a good way of hiding those mistakes. Also, you won't have to worry about things like finishes as much when you're just getting started. The last thing you want when you're starting into something like woodworking is to become discouraged in your first few projects, especially when it doesn't turn out the way you wanted it to. Learn to go with the mistakes and just let them happen and you'll do better on the next project. I don't remember who said the quote and I've been looking and I can't seem to find it anywhere, but a long time ago I heard a quote that goes something like, do art. And before anyone else can tell you what they think of it, do more art. Any art is about doing your best with what you know right now and to learn by doing and so that the next project you do will be better as you go. You never fail when you are learning, so expect to fail and expect to learn something from it. Also, don't forget that there are no rules to art. Don't let people tell you that you're doing something wrong if you have a reason to do it the way you are. You're never going to be able to make anything unique if you only ever do what everyone else does. Anyway, enough rambling. Thanks everyone for watching and I will catch you all next time. Go make something. All right, camera one. Audio's on, audio's on. Top down recording. I'm probably not gonna use this one to tell you the truth. <clears throat> I recorded anyway.